So I've just tried Windows Narrator and I have some advice for you. Don't use Windows Narrator. So you might think it's a bit of, of an overreaction for me to just say don't use Windows Narrator. I have some news for you. It really, really isn't. So, first of all, maybe this first bit depends on how fast your um, PC, laptop, anything like that is. Uh, but the commands to turn Narrator on took forever. So, Narrator turn on, it was Windows key, control and enter, um, which is not as easy as... Um, Option control and touch ID three times, but you know, well, we don't know actually. All we know is that Windows no way you ain't that good, but it wasn't as easy as Mac OS because it didn't turn the narrator on straight away. I could have got in two sips of coffee whilst that thing turned on. And you, just like you get on Max, you get the narrator on how to, like, get information on where to use narrator, stuff like that. You'd get that window come up. Except it doesn't give you any training for narrator, like VoiceOver will give you. It just tells you to go on the internet. Yeah, it tells you to go on the internet. So basically, Microsoft are just saying to you, and that's just one big, we put narrator in here, so I mean you can attempt to use it. They're putting narrator in so that it looks like they are appealing to people who need to use a narrator but they actually don't want to do any work on their narrator and Microsoft comment bad things on this video, take it down, do whatever you want I don't care, Windows narrator is terrible so then I pressed the Windows key to open the start menu and narrator did the first good thing it did it since the time I turned it on which was not long lived but I might as well tell you about it, you know, don't want don't want Bill Gates sending everyone after me. So it said that start menu was opened, yay, and I could press the down arrow to go through what apps there was. Okay, so let's open up Internet Explorer then, shall we? Okay, yeah, we'll do that. You don't press any modifier keys and then space, which seems weird to me, you just press space because the reason that VO modifier keys are used on Mac OS for the voiceover is to tell the Mac that you want to interact with voiceover. You don't just want to do something normal on the system. Um, apart from QuickNav, which QuickNav is a whole different story. Um, so it gets into Internet Explorer and it starts reading a few options, says that there's an image on the screen about 30 times, um, which I did have a recording of that, but then my iPad crashed, so one point to Microsoft. Oh wait, no, this is about narrators, no points to Microsoft, but seriously, Apple fix that. Anyway, so it opened up Internet Explorer and it told me what was on the screen slightly. It didn't tell me which website URL we was at or anything. And using the arrow keys, no modifier keys, just the arrow keys, I basically, it, it almost seemed like it was constantly stuck in quick nav on Mac OS. I was pressing the down arrow key and it was reading out letters, but I don't know where these letters were from. And the voiceover literally sounded like it was unhappy with me as it read them out. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm unhappy with it because it's terrible, as I've said before. Anyway, 
So that was that, and I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll try typing in a website URL. Now, on Macs, what you usually do is go to the toolbar, interact with the toolbar, and then you can go over to where it says search address or enter search website name. It says that. I don't know why it should just say website address, but there you go. And you can type in there. But I don't know how to get into the toolbar because Microsoft just decided to tell me to go on the web to get information about Narrator, which I don't really want to do. Imagine if I was only using offline programs on my computer because uh, I didn't have Wi-Fi, then I'd really be in a bad situation. I would have just spent money on a, a laptop which Microsoft RS was loaded onto, giving Microsoft money, and then I'd wanted to use the narrator which Microsoft loaded onto it and wouldn't be able to. Therefore, it would have been a bit of a rip-off. And then I thought, okay, well, it's not going to work on any of that. So I tried it in the start menu again. Again, start menu went fine. And I selected the Xbox Game Pass app. I thought, this is an app I actually want to use if I can boot camp Mac OS. That's not what I meant, boot camp Windows on my Mac. That's what I actually meant. So, I go in that, and the narrator just stops talking to me. I, I can't get it to start talking again. So, what that means to me, is it doesn't work in all Microsoft apps. Now, if you've been following along, you know that Microsoft are the people who made Windows, and therefore made Windows Narrator. So, why doesn't it work on a Microsoft app? on a Windows PC and gaming is quite a big reason why some people buy admittedly not Windows Core i3 laptops which is what this was but why a lot of people buy Windows in the first place yeah that bit didn't make sense to me either and what I was saying made sense to me probably might not have made sense the way it came out but the actual Game Pass thing didn't make sense, if that makes sense. If any of this makes sense, do I even make sense? I don't know anymore. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, What kind of bug? You're just complaining. Why don't you tell us some things that could be improved? Tell us some alternatives. I'm going to do that now, so... What I think needs to be improved about Narrator. First of all, please put in some actual modifier keys because otherwise things are just not going to go right because the narrator's not going to know what I'm doing and the computer ain't going to know what I'm doing half the time. Second of all, actually have it work on all Microsoft services rather than just ones you've sort of sectioned off to work with Narrator because I know what's happening here almost. I feel like Microsoft are thinking that if you're going to be using Narrator you're probably just going to be happy being able to use the web browser and emails on a computer and you're not going to want to do any of this more advanced playing games and video editing. Um, when companies think that, it really, really gets on my nerves to say PG me, if that's a word. So, yeah, Microsoft, get it working on more apps. Um, now, what I can also think is... Well, first of all, there ain't many settings, I don't think, to control Narrator. And 
actually Microsoft just recommend you use a third party screen reader anyway. Um, so, and I mean, that's not really good, is it? You shouldn't be expected to use another thing, even though they're not clear, making clear that the thing they've done is not very good. They should just make the thing that they've done good, if that makes sense. So, and I'm sorry these opinions aren't coming across very composed or well, it's just because I quickly made this video because I walked out on the writer. I was literally like, I'm not doing this anymore. After I'd just kept spamming the arrow key trying to get narrator to talk I just walked out on it I was like no I'm done here I am absolutely done with this narrator now what alternatives do I have for you I've not tried any alternatives um I've heard that NVDA or whatever it's called is good I'm not sure if JAWS is good but you can try it um, NVDA is actually free I believe so you can try that however I still think if you want the more advanced sort of video editing and stuff you should just really get a Mac if you want to do it with the speech software, the voiceover and everything because right now I don't even think Windows Movie Maker is as good as iMovie and if you don't want iMovie you can have Final Cut Pro if you're willing to um, sell a few things um, Actually, probably quite a few things. You might need to remortgage your house for Final Cut Pro, but um, you can get those if you want. Um, currently, let's say voiceover working with GarageBand and Logic Pro, I believe, as well. Well, Microsoft don't even have their own music creation software from what I know so that's sort of out of the window isn't it and why is it because it doesn't work on third party stuff how can you expect it to work on third party stuff it doesn't work on most of their first party stuff so yeah those are my alternative ideas and Again, these opinions haven't came across very well, but I also hope this video was funny to watch. Um, we need to complain to Microsoft about this. The, the only way we're going to fix this is complaining. Um, yeah, that's all I've got to say on the subject. So, as always, subscribe if you found this video funny or dare I say you got value out of it. I don't think you would, but hopefully it was funny and I needed to get that off narrator off my chest. So, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you particularly enjoyed the video and would like to see more from me. And as always, this is Tech on the Brain, out.